You're watching TRT World's continuing coverage of the earthquakes that hit southern Turkey and Syria. I'm Imran Garta. Last Monday, a 7.7 magnitude earthquake struck the province of Kahraman Marash. Just hours after the first quake, a second one of 7.6 magnitude struck 100 kilometers to the north. Ten provinces in southern Turkey have been affected. Tens of thousands are dead, over 100,000 injured, and millions affected. Within hours, the international community started to respond. Let's take a look. Rescue efforts continue among the ruins of cities. The international community rallied to provide aid and support after disaster struck on February 6th. Firefighters, medics, rescue dogs and equipment have come from afar to help locate people still trapped under the rubble and support the millions who've been left homeless. There are now search and rescue workers from 80 countries in Turkey. More than 9,000 foreign search and rescue personnel are in the country, about 25% of the total, and specialists from four more countries are expected to arrive soon. Street after street reduced to dust, teams working through the night to save lives. This place is very cold, so we have to seize the opportunity of these days, locate the possible survivors efficiently and get them out in a professional and scientific way as soon as possible. This Chinese team pulled a man from the remains of his apartment block in Antakya after he lay trapped for more than 150 hours. Another team from Pakistan has rescued five people so far. The Army's search and rescue team is going to travel with approximately three tons of aid. Also, another rescue package comprising of 55 rescue 1122 personnel together with 15, 16 tons of aid will leave from Lahore. It's been over a week since the earthquakes hit Turkey and Syria, leaving hundreds of thousands of people without basic supplies and unable to return home. International organizations and NGOs are helping to provide food, shelter and medical care. And ordinary citizens are doing their bit too, donating and collecting tons of aid. Everybody wants to support, of course, what is going on in Turkey and in Syria is a crisis that we should all come together as humanity and uh, we should all try to, um, um, hand in hand, try to support with anything we can. Qatar is sending 10,000 ready homes, which were part of the 2020 FIFA World Cup accommodation. The EU activated its emergency Copernicus satellite, a mapping service to help first responders. And the US has vowed to help its NATO ally. As I told President Erdogan, and I called him immediately when the first quake hit, that the United States was offering our full support, full support. And countries like Indonesia, Haiti and Pakistan, which have experienced firsthand the devastation large earthquakes can cause, are also doing their part. Turkey is one of the world's largest humanitarian donors, spending billions in different parts of the world. Now, as the country tries to come to terms with this enormous loss, the international community is stepping up to return the favor. Well, joining me now from Ankara is Nicolas Meyer Landrut, the EU ambassador to Turkey, Johannes Wimmer, the Austrian ambassador to Turkey, and Lee Won Ik, the South Korean ambassador to Turkey. Gentlemen, good to have you on the program. Let me start with you, Ambassador Wimmer. Uh, can we say uh, quite clearly, in the face of catastrophe and devastation in the past week, that we've seen a great example of international solidarity, of leadership, of coordination, of compassion? Yes, indeed. I fully agree with you. Uh, in all the sadness and shock uh, uh, we, we witnessed, um, uh, forces were joined very quickly and international solidarity was very, very strong. Um, and and um, many countries were really rushing to help. Tell me what it means to the, to the people and the government of Austria to help the people of Turkey and Syria in this time of need. The mood uh, among Austrians was one of, of, of solidarity. There was a wave of, of, of initiatives um, and the Austrian government uh, really reacted very quickly. 
Uh, they at once made available two rescue teams, a medium rescue team and um, a heavy urban search and rescue team um, uh, to, to, to help um, uh, finding survivors. Mm -hmm. And also some financial aid was immediately made available, uh, uh, about uh, 3 million euros right. uh, on the 6th. Ambassador, okay. Ambassador Lee Won Ik, it was fascinating on, on, on Twitter, your, your president, Yoon suk -yul, saying, we are ready to help Turkey, our compatriots forged by blood during the Korean War in any way. Do people sometimes underestimate the, the deep relationship between the two nations? Right. As you know, I mean, the korean Turkey relationship is very special. We Koreans never forget that Turkey is... Uh, uh, contribution, I mean, during the Korean War and the sacrifice, especially in the Korean Gazi layer. We think without it, I mean, the Korea's freedom and democracy and economic democ uh, prosperity today cannot be possible. Now it's time. We should do our job to support Turkey, uh, border nation, as you did it uh, for us in the Korean War. You have a 118 member team on the ground. Have you been in contact with them? Tell us a little bit about the work they've been doing. I mean, we've seen some of the work they've been doing, pulling people out of the rubble, but tell me a little bit more about what they're doing on the ground. Yeah, the Korean government swiftly sent, I mean, the Korea Disaster Relief, uh, relief Team, it consisting of 118 members, uh, which is the largest number uh, for us. And they are doing search and rescue uh, operation day and night at Antarctica Hatay to save uh, more lives. Uh, they uh, rescued uh, around, I mean, eight, uh, a total of eight, I mean, people, including two-year-old girl. I myself uh, also uh, was in Antarctica to support, support, I mean, the, our rescue team. I slept in the car and for four nights. Uh, I'm so, I mean, the, the, the uh, uh, sad uh, to, uh, to see the, I mean, many tears uh, and also the, the voices, I mean, of calling the family mm -hmm. missing calling the family members, but we do our best for, uh, for saving more life. Tell us, tell us a bit more about how, how much that personally affected you while you were there, sleeping in the car, spending time on the ground, connecting with people. Yeah, yeah, so that's uh, uh, really, really hard, I mean, the, to sleep, uh, in that kind of car, but the, it must, it deserved. I mean, the, so I'm I was happy. I mean, to be there, uh, and also the one thing that I really impressed was, I mean, the the Korean team is very closely uh, work with the uh, Turkish counterpart uh, like a uh, regional AFAT and the municipal. I mean, the uh, counterpart uh, based on that kind of co uh, close cooperation. Uh, we can smoothly and successfully uh, uh, rescue uh, uh, operation and we can achieve some uh, uh, good result. Did you get a sense of hope from people on the ground there? What? What? Did you get a sense of hope from people on the ground there? Yeah, 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 sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, I got a, yeah, that kind of feeling. Oh. Mm. Nicholas Mayer Landrit, it's interesting. I mean, the other two gentlemen represent countries, you represent a, a body uh, that's made up of a collection of countries. For a lot of people, they might not understand what it takes to, to sort of mobilize support and, and money and aid and help when you look at the EU as a whole. Give us some insight into, into how that happens. Well, first of all, let me again express my deepest condolences and those of the EU and its member states and institutions to the Turkish people and Turkey after this really extraordinary, uh, dramatic disaster, <clears throat> where we all want to help as good as we can. For the European Union, there are the first stages that we have a, a common center to coordinate assistance of member states, uh, to which the Turkish authorities, AFAD, actually applied for help within hours of the earthquake, which allowed us to uh, help member states mobilize their teams and so on, all in all, in rescue teams, the European Union member states have provided 38 response teams consisting of more than 1,650 1, people and 106 search and rescue dogs. So this was the first uh, phase. And in the second phase, we were asked from the Turkish Authority from AFA to provide shelter. 
And by now, uh, 50,000 family winter tents, 100,000 blankets, 50,000 heaters have been provided by 12 member states. And the commission with its own means has added 500 relief housing units mm -hmm. and 2,000 tents, 8,000 beds. So we are coordinating, we are helping member states to bring their teams on the ground and we are having our own relief assistance which we can, with which we can top up the help of member states but I must say at this stage, really, the, the biggest effort on the ground at this stage is done by the member states with their teams, whom I want to thank wholeheartedly right. for their well, and, and they are doing some amazing work. A Ambassador Mayor Landrut, I wonder about the difference when it comes to responding and reacting to the same disaster across the border in Syria. Of course, earthquakes affect people, not governments per se. Uh, given the political realities of the EU having sanctions on, on Syria, on the difficulties of the border crossings, on the fact that Bashar al-Assad controls some parts affected, the opposition controls other parts affected, tell me how much that complicates the work that the EU is doing and does it mean that the Syrian people get less aid in the aftermath of the disaster? Well, we are very preoccupied by the situation in Syria. The European Union in the past and today is channeling its assistance to Syria through the United Nations and its uh, organizations, uh, through uh, the uh, Turkish-Syrian uh, uh, border crossing point, which uh, leaves Turkey from, from Hatay to, uh, to Syria, to Idlib. Uh, you see how difficult this is uh, in terms of transport. Uh, we also work with the United Nations in the other parts of Syria, but uh, the, the, the main objective for us is to support the United Nations in their efforts to bring the humanitarian assistance to the different parts of Syria. We have an old Syria approach on humanitarian assistance. Everybody re needs or to requires blankets, other, uh, other humanitarian assistance should, uh, should, should be reached with this assistance. But you're right, it's a much more difficult exercise. It takes longer and it's heartbreaking. Well, what do you need to make it easier? Do you need a UN Security Council mandate to uh, ensure more crossings? Do you need Assad to allow more crossings? What, what exactly is needed to make it easier? Well, if the regime uh, allows for the opening of border crossing points, I don't need a resolution from the United Nations. Mm. Uh, so. Uh, at this stage, all those who are involved in Syria should cooperate to allow for humanitarian assistance. And it is very uh, uh, yeah, hard to see that humanitarian assistance is used in a political sense. This is not at all our approach. This is humanitarian assistance. People are suffering and help needs to get to them as quickly as possible. And this is what we are working for. Hmm. Ambassador Lee Won Ik, how difficult does it make things when the two countries affected are in different political situations. In case of uh, Syria, I mean, the, we also very much concerned about the Syrian situation by the catastrophe. So we try to help them by providing, I mean, the humanitarian assistance through the international organization. But the, in case of Turkey, uh, uh, now in the, all the Korean governments and bodies are working together uh, to actively come up with the assistance measures uh, to the Turkey's request for humanitarian assistance. In particular, my president on Monday instructed the Korean government to mobilize all available resources to secure maximum relief uh, supplies for the Turkey and the people. And he asked each ministry to designate a department uh, responsible for handling aid for Turkey to ensure Turkey receives not only emergency relief, but also help with reconstruction. So in the, from, from the government side, initially, three cargo aircrafts, including two military cargos, will arrive uh, in uh, Adana uh, at the end of this week with humanitarian goods that the Turkish people is uh, in the disaster area urgently needs, such as tents, blankets, sleeping bags, and medical equipments. And also the 
uh, not only the Korean, uh, it's a government level, but also many Korean people are donating money or goods for needs. Mm. When I communicate with a uh, Turkish ambassador in Korea, the embassy is full of the uh, goods, humanitarian goods sent by the Korean people and very busy packing to send them. Yeah. And many Korean companies and civilian groups are mm. also joining at that kind of donation. Yeah, it yeah. was quite mind-blowing seeing the amount of uh, people that were conducting crowdfunding in order to help the situation. It was fascinating to see that and uh, really heartwarming as well. Uh, Johannes uh, Wimmer, Mr. Ambassador, as the conversation evolves from rescue and recovery and immediate humanitarian help to reconstruction, is Austria involved in that discussion? Is Austria planning to be involved in any relief efforts and recovery and, and uh, rather re rebuilding efforts down the line? I think right now we, 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 are, we are still in, 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 in a very early phase of recovery. We keep our efforts sustained. I mean, the, the, um, also uh, civil society and, 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 and general mobilization of funds uh, is going on in Austria. We have one uh, big um, um, initiative. Uh, it, date back, it dates back to the wars in Yugoslavia. It's called Neighbor in Need. Uh, they keep mobilizing funds, and there are about nine organizations uh, which are involved, humanitarian organizations, which have links and, 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 um, and cooperation on the ground in Turkey as well as in, as in Syria. And as we go from early recovery um, to, to, the, to the reconstruction um, uh, efforts, um, uh, I think uh, we will not leave Turkey alone. Uh, we will do this primarily, I think, within EU, uh, but uh, I'm sure there will be also uh, support from, from, from Austria as such, and, and, um, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure this, 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 will, this will be discussed and is already being discussed. Right, and I wonder what your thoughts are on the initiative by your neighboring country, Germany, where they announced a three-month emergency visa for those in Turkey or Syria who have first or second degree relatives in Germany. Do you think it's a good idea? Uh, we followed that discussion, of course, in Austria. At the moment, what we try is to speed up procedures within uh, the, 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 the regulations in place. This is what we're doing now. Mm. Everything else is a, is a discussion uh, that, that is ongoing. Let me, let me take that and pose it to Nicolas Meyer-Landrut because it's a nice headline when you see it, but when we look at some of the details for Turkey, the external service provider, provider IDATA, is responsible for issuing the visas in Turkey. The appointments still have to go through there at their visa acceptance centers. Visa seekers must prove that their residence was in the earthquake zone. If they lost their passport, which is quite likely, uh, given that they probably lost everything, if they lost their passport, they first have to apply for a new passport through the Turkish authorities before they do this. And of course, for people in Syria, applicants from Syria have to turn to surrounding foreign missions due to the fact that they don't have embassies in Damascus. So they have to travel to Beirut, to Amman, to uh, the consulate general in Istanbul. So I, I don't want to put you in a, <laughs> in a pickle here, but it doesn't sound as if this is workable. Would that be fair? Well, I'm not speaking for Germany. I'm speaking here for the European Union. So uh, the visa uh, rules and the application of the visa rules reside with individual member states. And uh, I uh, follow the debate and I see that the German authorities want to make an effort to make it easier for relatives living in Germany to allow for those who are in need in Turkey and in Syria to uh, join their relatives in, uh, in Germany. So this is the objective, and I'm sure that the German authorities, uh, which have said that they will increase the capacities, that they will do the necessary at their consulates, will try to implement this as good as possible. But again, this is a question which, in the end, you need to discuss Certainly. with the German as I As I laid it out to you there, do you think it's workable? Again, uh, I understand the objective, 
and I think the uh, German authorities will do everything they can to make this objective work. This is why uh, this initiative has been taken. Hmm. Lee Wanek, Mr. Ambassador, it's been a week. Tell me what's the most important lesson that you can derive from this disaster and the response? Yeah, definitely, I mean, uh, uh, the international cooperation. I mean, this kind of the, uh, February 6th earthquake is an unthinkably huge, huge disaster. It's impossible for any one country to manage this kind of, or to control uh, this kind of situation. So every country should uh, work together, I mean, for supporting, I mean, the Turkey in trouble. So the currently, I mean, the rescue activities shows uh, carried by the many countries shows the strong solidarity of international society to tackle with uh, this kind of tremendous disasters. Hmm. Nicholas Mayer Landrut, do you, do you hope that in the aftermath of this disaster, some of the political situations on the ground might, might improve? Especially when it comes to the fact that it's difficult and it's more difficult, I revisit that point, it's more difficult to get aid to Syrians who are suffering in the aftermath of the earthquake. Do you think we might learn a lesson from it? Well, I hope that people see that working together on this humanitarian catastrophe is something which benefits people, which brings people together, and where we as a European Union want to do everything we can do to help the people, uh, the people affected both in, in Turkey and Syria as much as we can. And uh, beyond the humanitarian assistance, President of the Commission has announced the preparation of an international donor conference for both Syria and Turkey, which I hope will take place in March. There is no specific date now, where we will be able, as an international donor conference, to help set up the next stages of early recovery and hopefully reconstruction, also in an international coordinated effort. Johann That's what we yeah. want. Johannes Wimmer, international donor conference, is that something that Austria would wholeheartedly support? Certainly, I mean this is um, a very welcome initiative by 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 the uh, by the EU Commission and the EU Presidency, and of course, I think uh, we, we we can be very very happy that this this initiative has been taken. Hmm. Uh, given the earlier point that these disasters don't affect countries, they affect people, and it crosses borders. The borders are not recognized by uh, the earthquake. Would you, would you look at the, the international system that is currently designed and feel that it's well equipped, Johannes, to handle this sort of devastation? Let me say as good as it gets, uh, I think we know perfections are limitless. The international system has its deficiencies. There's no doubt about that. But I think what I see now at the moment is that uh, the, the goodwill prevails. Uh, uh, you see that bilaterally um, between, uh, say, Turkey and, and, and other countries, and you see it um, uh, collectively. So I think um, uh, perhaps for, for, for the later perspective, we should look at that. At the moment, I think... Uh, um, uh, let's try to keep a positive outlook. Mm -hmm. Lee Wanek, I'm going to give you the final word on the program. We have a minute left. Go ahead, sir. Okay, we Koreans will be with uh, Turkey, uh, with, uh, along with the international society, until you overcome the disaster and return to the normal life. The Korean government already uh, uh, expressed our willingness to uh, do everything, not only I mean in the first early stage, but also uh, for the uh, reconstruction, I mean, the, the, the project. We will be with you, Turkey. The three ambassadors, I thank you very much for joining us on the program. Lee Won Ik, Nicholas Meyer-Landrut, and Johannes Wimmer. It's been a pleasure. Thanks again.